Hello, Telvani here, and today I'm happy to bring you my first map science and atlas strategy video of 3.19 Lake of Calandra. With the overwhelming nerfs to loot and juiced mapping, I figured we'd start out with something kind of low key. This brings us to the first league mechanic that we will be testing, essences. I've heard a lot of good things about essences this league, as they have guaranteed loot and aren't really affected by the nerfs to quantity that other league mechanics suffer from. So I figured we'd give them a shake and see just how profitable they are. With the nerfs to Essence Monster HP and the nerf to Arc Nemesis defensive modifiers, hopefully this will be something fairly accessible to most players. Next, I've heard pretty terrible things about Harvest, but Harvest has had its difficulty significantly reduced. The monsters now have less HP, and they now spawn in waves, rather than in one giant death ball. And while you're no longer going to be able to sell crafts individually for 15 or 20 chaos a pop, the current itemized system should be a lot more accessible for casual players and those who don't like using TFT. So I figured we might as well take a look at investing into Harvest on the tree and see if it's worth running in an Alk and Go scenario. For our map, we wanted a layout that made it easy to rush to the boss as we will be utilizing an altar farming strategy. We also wanted a map that had another decent map connected to it on the atlas. For this test, I have chosen Mud Geyser, as the map boss is always in the same location, and it doesn't take more than 10 seconds or so to reach it. Mud Geyser also has an atlas connection to Atoll, another great map layout for boss rushing. This should hopefully allow us to infinitely sustain our map pool so long as we are willing to ping-pong back and forth between the two maps when we've run out of one. Alright, so I've got our 48 maps here, and I've gone ahead and chiseled and elked them. I've also re-rolled any maps with nasty modifiers that are difficult for my build, using alchemy orbs and scours. For our sextants, we will be running just one, Corrupted Essences. This should allow us to over-sustain our Remnants of Corruption, as well as adding extra essences to every single map. This sextant is also incredibly cheap, costing only one chaos per map. You could theoretically add more sextants to your atlas strategy, however with the nerfs to loot, I'm not sure it would actually be worth adding more juice. But don't worry, we'll probably be going full juice in a future video of this league. Next, we're not actually running any scarabs or fragments this time around as we will be running a Stream of Consciousness setup. Taking a look at our Atlas tree, I am running a pretty typical League Start setup, and I think I'm actually missing about 5 Atlas passive points at the moment. Starting at the bottom of the tree here, we are grabbing Essences and Strongbox nodes, pathing up here through these Heist nodes to grab more Essence nodes. We are also picking up Map Sustain nodes and Delirium nodes. I'm not actually sure these Delirium nodes are worth running in the current environment, as Delirium orbs are so cheap. But either way, it's free loot, so I thought we'd spend the 4 points. Pathing down here, we are blocking most League mechanics apart from Harvest, as we specifically want to be testing out the new Harvest system. Coming back over here, we are grabbing Shrine nodes, coming down here to grab more Map Sustain nodes, and blocking League mechanics apart from Heist and Delirium. We're also grabbing this wheel down here, which will give us a higher chance of seeing Harvests in our map. Coming back up here, we are grabbing all of these Harvest nodes, pathing over here to pick up Stream of Consciousness, and that'll help us see a little bit more of everything in our maps. Coming over here, we are taking more Map Sustain nodes, as well as Singular Focus. This will allow us to over-sustain our map pool of Atoll and Mud Geyser maps. Coming up here, we are spending 2 points for Operative Strongboxes, and this is pretty nice, because it'll add some extra Scarabs to our loot. In the center of the tree, we are taking Shrine Nodes, Essence Nodes, and Harvest Nodes. Moving over to the left, we are taking more Essence Nodes, and Wrath of the Cosmos. Wrath of the Cosmos makes the maps pretty rippy, so if you're trying to level up, you probably shouldn't take this node. However, foregoing it is a fairly significant cut, to profits from altars. Finally, we are heading over to the right to grab all of the Eater of World nodes. If you prefer, you can grab all of the Searing Exarch nodes instead, 
as the embers are more expensive than the ickers. However, on average, you can expect to be seeing more ickers than you would embers, so it should more or less even out. Also, I don't really like the Searing Exarch mods, as I'll often get that burning ground that absolutely destroys all of my characters. One more thing that is important to note here is that on the actual atlas itself, I'm favoriting Atoll, as it is a connected map to Mudgeyser. This should cause us to receive an overwhelming number of Atoll maps. I have also favorited a single instance of Mudgeyser, just in case one of those drop. As you can see, I have most of my favorite map slots unlocked here, and this strategy probably wouldn't self-sustain without a lot of favorited slots. I still haven't attempted the feared yet this league, but that would be a good thing to do, if possible, to increase our map drops even further. Moving on, let's take a look at our expenses. We bought 48 maps for 4 chaos each, and we spent another 25 chaos worth of chisels, bringing them up to 20 quality. We used 5 chaos worth of alchemy orbs to get them to rare quality initially, and then another 15 chaos worth of elks and scours, getting the maps with acceptable modifiers. We spent 48 chaos for 48 charges of essence sextants, and we will be spending 96 chaos to use the Kirak essence craft on all of our maps. This brings our total investment to 381 chaos or around 2.2 Divine Orbs at the current exchange rates. This is an incredibly low investment, as the strategy is pretty minimalistic, so I am sure that we will make all of this back, and more. However, I am curious to see just how much profit we will actually make. But, as I am recording this part of the video before running the maps, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, I'm going to get to work yeeting through these maps, and I'll see you on the flip side. All right, I am back, and I thought I'd mention a few things. First off, this is an altar farming strategy, so we want to be killing the map boss as soon as possible. This will remove all of the boss related options on altars, giving us a better chance at getting Icker drops. This is why we are running Mud Geyser or Atoll, as it makes it incredibly easy to find the boss. Mud Geyser is a giant circle with an inaccessible area in the middle. When you enter the map, the boss will be on the exact opposite side of the hole in the middle of the map. Next, because we are running an altar strategy with Wrath of the Cosmos, I would try to finish your harvests as soon as you come across them, as they can be pretty dangerous. Alternatively, you can wait until the end and potentially make some more currency with the quantity bonuses from your altars. Another thing to mention is that I have been actively farming mirrored tablets during this test, as they can sell for 20 chaos or so, sometimes even a divine or two, depending on what you get on them. Finally, I was basically full clearing every map, getting the monster count below 50 in every single instance. I honestly don't think this was really worth the extra time spent, and you probably shouldn't follow my lead on that one. Theoretically, it will increase your value per map, but your currency generated per hour, on the other hand, will probably be lower, as you'll most likely be running less maps per hour. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the loot we received from running this test. Here we have our Essence tab. I've upgraded all of our Essences to Deafening, as it is difficult to sell other types in bulk, and I have valued this tab at only 90% of its Po Ninja price. I was being quite liberal with my use of Remnants of Corruption, and as you can see, we still ended up netting over 100 of them. Next, we have our Scarab tab. This was very pitiful, to be honest. And I think this was mostly because we only had one or two strong boxes per map, and they were usually only normal quality. Next, we have our maps and invitations. We had a whopping 70 maps drop during this test, so we were able to massively oversustain our map pool of Atolls. If you were running this strategy, you would want to run Atolls next favoriting mostly Mud Geyser maps. We didn't have too many boss maps drop, as a lot of them were presumably being culled, such as Shaper maps. But we did get one Conqueror map at all, and a few valuable invitations as well. Next up, we have our Heist tab. Like Scarabs, this was pretty underwhelming. But it did add one or two Chaos value to our maps, for basically zero effort and very little investment on our Atlas tree. Next, 
we have our Eldritch Currency. We got a lot of Grand Ickers, thanks to our Wrath of the Cosmos node. And we even got pretty lucky with a few Annulment and Chaos Orbs. Here we have our Delirium tab. And while we didn't get too many orbs, it was very low effort. I usually only got 5 tile rewards, and I didn't worry too much about the fog. And we still got over a divine worth of orbs here. Next, we've got our general loot tab. This is quite a bit smaller than most of our tests in the past, but we are not really juicing too much, so that was to be expected. I've upgraded all of our lower tier currencies up via the vendor to make it easier to sell. We also netted over 10,000 Harvest Life Force during this test. Down here you can see the mirrored tablets we picked up, and I've tried my best to min-max these while mapping, so I'd probably expect them to sell for around 20 chaos each. This leads us to some of the big ticket items we got. I was actually able to create a tier 14 Reflection of Calandra tablet, and this is currently going for around 3 divine orbs. We also picked up a Heri's Ire, an Enlightened Gem, and a valuable memory. I wouldn't expect you to get all of this in a 48 map sample, but you should expect to see maybe a few 10 to 20 chaos big ticket items in your own tests. We'll be sure to go over some of the what if scenarios when we finally get around to pricing all of this. Moving on to our excluded loot tab, this has all of our junk divination cards and low tier essences. This stuff all technically has a little bit of value, especially the essences, but as is, I personally wouldn't try selling this. And as I want our test to be meaningful, all of these items will be excluded from our calculations coming up here. Speaking of which, let's take a look at those now. Our general loot and currency brought in close to two divine orbs. Our harvest life force, a little over one divine orb. And the same goes for our delirium rewards. Essences were the big money maker, pulling in 3.3 divines worth and Scarabs were basically negligible. Our 70 maps I valued at 4C each, for a total of 280 chaos. And our boss maps and invitations were another 1.2 divines worth. Heist was pretty underwhelming at around 1.5 chaos per map, and Eldra Currency was our second highest grossing category, bringing in over 2 divines. The mirrored tablets I have again priced at around 20 chaos each, and all of our big ticket items brought in around 815 chaos, or nearly 5 divines worth. This brings our total revenue to nearly 19 divine orbs. And seeing how we spent 2.2 divines investing into this test, we netted a total profit of 16.7 divine orbs, or 60 chaos per map. While focused, these maps were taking me on average 4 minutes to run, so a dedicated player with a similar build could expect to receive around 5.2 divines an hour, assuming that they had my incredible luck with big ticket items. However, most players will probably not be that lucky, and while it's reasonable to expect some lucky drops, 5 divines worth of big ticket items in 48 maps is a little wild. So if we come up here to our offset, we can subtract some of this value away from our total revenue. If we do this, you can see our total profit drops down to around 12.2 divine orbs, and that on average, you'd be more likely to see just shy of 4 divines per hour running this strategy. Next, let's take a look at how Harvest and Essences fared individually. So, was Harvest worth running? We had zero investment into Harvest apart from the Atlas Tree. Our total revenue in Chaos was 228 so we profited around 5 chaos per map while running Harvest. This does not sound that great to me, so I would have to go ahead and not recommend running Harvest in your maps. That has been the general consensus this league, so it's not much of a surprise. However, I thought it was important to test this for myself, and to see the results personally. Next up, was Essence worth running? We had 571 chaos worth of drops from Essence, and we spent only 144 chaos on Sextants and Kyrick Crafts. This means we profited 427 chaos in our 48 map test, or roughly 9 chaos per map. If your build can handle Essences, and you are basically instantly deleting them, I would probably recommend giving them a try at the moment, as they take very little time, 
especially when compared with league mechanics like Harvest. So, would I run this strategy in the future? Well, yes and no. Altar farming is generally always worth it, as it adds free juice and drops to your maps. Essence turned out to be fairly profitable, although I feel like there may be better mechanics out there this league. Harvest was absolutely not worth running, so if you want to run this strategy yourself, I'd probably recommend replacing it with another league mechanic instead. Overall, 4 divines an hour feels pretty sad compared to last league, but we've got to keep in mind that we no longer have access to sentinels. I am planning on doing high-juiced content here in the near future, and I think this was a pretty helpful test to establish a baseline for low to no juiced maps. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to support the channel, please consider subscribing, as it does mean a lot. Anyway, thank you for watching, good luck with your league, and I'll see you in the next one.